In this video, we're going to use the terminologies TDC, which uh, refers to top dead center. This is where the piston is the furthermost top of its travel in the cylinder bore. And then we have BDC, which is a bottom dead center, where the piston is at the lowest point of its travel in the cylinder bore. The Land Rover Toolbox videos is sponsored by Brookwells, and we're glad to have them on board to help us to help you to stay on the road. Okay, hello and welcome back guys and girls. This is a compression tester and I'm pretty sure all of you know what it's for and how to use one. However, I just want to make it clear because some people don't know is what we're looking for. We are looking for a difference in the figures and not a specific pressure. Okay, so we're working from the back to the front and uh, 365, uh, 355 PSI, 368 and 357. Now there's not a massive difference between these cylinders in pressures. And we're looking for a maximum of about 10% difference. This will tell us if there's a cylinder out. Okay, so number four is okay. Number three, number two and number one, you can see number three is at 340 PSI which is not brilliant. It's a lot lower than the rest of them and I would suspect this one has got damage or a broken ring or something. This is the sort of thing you'd look. You have to take the uh, glow plugs out to do a compression test and uh, also they can be a bit of a pig. You want to be looking to see if they're oil fouled or not. That would give you an indication whether that cylinder has issues. With the 300 and the 200 TDI, it's a bit awkward, uh, especially on number four and number one, to fit an adapter. And so when you're looking for an adapter, make sure it's a narrow one that's uh, got enough length on it so you can clear that shoulder there. This is uh, 10 by uh, 1 mil. And basically, this adapter does fit. This was an eBay purchase. So you're yeah, pretty cool there. You don't want the adapter too long, otherwise it will not fit in number four cylinder. So basically you go ahead and uh, just crank it over with the uh, fuel stop solenoid disconnected and it will give you a pressure. I'm not doing it today because we're doing a leak down test. Okay, now this is a better, should I say more superior way of checking for cylinder pressures or any leaks. Okay, so basically you have a basic kit and some adapters, and I will show you what this uh, kit is all about. Our poor old compression tester, it has its uses, uh, don't get me wrong, and the price of the kits can be comparative. The leak down tester, basically, it puts a pressure into the cylinder. Now, it's at TDC, so there's actually not much space. And what it's looking for is any leakage or leak down. And this will not only be through the piston rings or the side of the piston skirts, it's also um, in through the valves or in through the cooling system, which could indicate a cylinder head gasket problem. This is a very good bit of equipment, but you do need to be intrusive. Things need to be removed, and uh, including the uh, cap there on the reservoir. Um, this tool here, the viscous hub fan spanner, I'm uh, using to turn the engine. Uh, there's no resistance because the heater plugs have been removed. So this is the way we go. We're going to uh, access so we can put pe pressure into the cylinder using the holes where the glow plugs were. Uh, adapters for this are actually in the uh, laser kit that I've got. And the thread again is uh, 10 by 1 millimeter. You can see that there, perfect match, fits absolutely great. And the adapter will fit where the glow plugs are. As I said, with a compression tester, um, you've got to have a fairly thin adapter. Now, this will do uh, up to M14, which obviously you can uh, do a spark ignition engines with. The downside to this tool is you need a constant pressure of at least 100 PSI. And uh, yeah, if you haven't got a compressor, then basically this tool is no good for you. Most of you should have compressors, however, and I'd hope that you'd have a, um, a little bit of knowledge about how engines, uh, the timings are, because you need to be able to work out where TDC is on each piston. I'm using a viscous hub spanner to turn the engine round. Um, basically, what we do is set each of the pistons in turn 
uh, when we're testing it to TDC, okay? Now, the way we do this is watch how the rockers work. Now, the rockers on the rock is wrong. You need it on the compression stroke at the top at TDC. Now, I'm using this spanner here to turn the engine with to be able to set each one of the valves so I've got it right. And all of the glow plugs have been removed. As I said, you don't need to crank the engine over here. It needs to be a static. However, it does need to be warm. It needs to be warmed up to operating temperature first. Now, so what I'm going to do is explain a little bit about this. If you don't know about engine timing, you must at least know what squeeze, suck, bang, blow is because basically you need to get this on a compression stroke. So um, what I've got here, first of all, is uh, this is exhaust down. All right, so it's blow at the moment. And the next one that comes in the cycle is suck. Yeah, so this will be an induction stroke. Okay, so there's your induction stroke on number one, and as it comes up, okay, we should then have the cylinder closed ready um, for compression. So that's closed, and the next thing to do is bring this up to TDC. Only number one piston has a marker for TDC, the rest don't, so this is a method to find TDC. So basically, I'm using a cable tie end and uh, feeling for when the piston comes right up to a top dead center and basically you can you can feel it with a cable tie i wouldn't use anything too um strong uh, basically what you'll find is that tdc has a pause in it so uh, you want to get it in the middle of the pause before the piston you can feel when the piston comes up you can feel when the piston goes down just be careful not to trap the cable tie on the edge of the piston as it comes up so I've got number three set and I'll just show you what happens when you don't have a TDC because as you put the pressure on and uh, watch the uh, the fan spin okay over there and the gauge see what happens bang the engines just turned it's gone to BDC and you can't get a pressure reading you have to have it TDC just take your time when you do this you can feel it you know when it's there and uh, just remember not to get anything that you've stuck down in the bore trapped against the piston and the cylinder wall. So yeah, it's just a matter of feel, but it's possible. It's very, very possible. So once TDC is set and you know it's at TDC, you can then add the pressure on. I'm going to turn this, crank this up to 100 psi. Okay, we just watch to make sure that the engine doesn't uh, spit a wobbly and, and go past TDC and push the piston down. As you know, some engines can be started on compressed air, and it doesn't take much to actually uh, turn a crank with a minimum amount of pressure. Right, so turning this right up, I'll put it right to 100 psi, or, or yeah, just about 100 psi. What I'm looking for on the right-hand gauge is to tell me what percentage of loss that I'm getting through this. Now you can see straight away it's a blue near set, it's just on the green which is a low loss. Okay, I've got to not take the uh, air supply off, this has to have a constant air supply. Now if you can hear the hissing and this is coming through the crank um, or the crank case, the crank breather system and you can hear that change. Okay, so I wouldn't worry too much about that, that's minimal. We always get um, crank case pressure, that's what the toroidal uh, or the cyclone is about. The thing to watch for is uh, pressure coming through the cooling system. Now you always have this system hot, because this will open up any cracks in the cylinder head. And of course, if the valves are leaking, it will come through the induction system or if the exhaust is burnt it will come through the uh, turbo and into the exhaust and you'll be able to hear that so that's number one done you can see that's a nice tight seal on there this is a brilliant test it tells you much more than just a compression tester looking at where the gauge is actually sat you can see that that is on the top half of the low loss and that's not even at 20 percent loss so we're we're pretty good to go there but uh, not all of the cylinders in the engine are the same. So if we look at number two, you can see the gauge here, it's uh, on the low side of low loss. Okay, so it's starting to go into the green area. 
So we might be looking at a 40% loss here. And uh, just to make sure you can see that 100 PSI is going in. So this is uh, basically telling you basically how much flow of air is going through the gauge. And by this they've calculated the percentage of loss of pressure over time. Okay, so they, this fairly constant 40% loss, I would say, yeah, that's worn. It's not excessively bad because it still fires up when you turn it over and squirt diesel in it. However, this is not going to get any better. Again, with each cylinder, you go around and you check to see where the pressure is being lost. This, again, is coming through the crankcase system, so the, the cylinders are worn. We've got to expect it. It is a fairly old engine. But just remember, we're looking for split or cracked valves, burnt valve seats, or uh, cylinder head gasket problems as well. And there doesn't seem to be any on this engine as of yet. Well, actually, all four come up about the same. So there you go. Crank case pressure is not really an issue. You've seen it's calculated the loss there is. You can hear the uh, pressure coming through the uh, up through to the head. Okay, this is why we have breathers. The main thing is looking for pressure in the cooling system. It will either bubble up or you'll be able to feel some sort of pressure coming out of here okay and then well you can't see it unless i put a light in there but there's there's no bubbles so that's fine as i said again you need the engine warm there's no doubt about it now i take the uh, inlet off and check to see if there's any pressure no pressure there the valves are good no problem okay so let's have a little bit of fun here I'm uh, going to put different adapters on, doesn't matter, these are extensions. The extensions help you to access uh, different engines, no big deal. Um, this one's actually two inches high and it is actually quite awkward to uh, get to the back. Right, so we'll turn the pressure right up. And uh, number one is set, well it's not actually set at TDC and I'll tell you about this in a minute. Okay, so we've got a lot of loss. Okay, 100 PSI, and you can see that that is a very high loss of pressure. Okay, now where is it? Well, I'll show you where it is. It's over here, right? It's coming out of the uh, inlet. You can hear that? Okay. Um, if there was a, a split valve or the uh, seat had split or there was uh, some sort of leakage, you'd get it through the inlet. However, what has happened here is I've done this, I've set this on the rock. And the opposite on number four, that's set on a compression stroke. That's set um, opposite to this one because one and four are opposites, okay? So the inlet valve is just very slightly open. You can hear the amount of leakage there is there. Very good indicator to tell you whether you have a burnt out valve. So there you go. Right, so the, uh, the quick test, and this is just to check how much... Uh, crankcase pressure you actually uh, could be having there is just lift the uh, oil filler cap off and see if there's any pressure there if there's a considerable loss it'll come through at the top here uh, there's no doubt about it rev it up a bit just hold the uh, the cap on loosely if that wants to come off then you know you've got pressure there okay it doesn't seem to be any at all it's okay and uh, yeah this this actually this engine isn't too bad it's getting worn up, it's not the end of its life, but it's tired. So what I'll do is let you listen to it for a little while, see what you think. I can feel a misfire in this at a certain rev range. It could be injectors, it could actually be the lack of compression in, in one cylinder. And possibly cylinder two is, isn't as, as balanced as the rest of them.